Key point one. Prevention is always easier than a cure. Every year, substantial financial allocations and budgets are set for various things that don't necessarily need it. Yet, money still gets pumped into them. It's hard to imagine the magnitude of a trillion dollars, but this considerable amount is relatively small compared to the global scale. It represents about 1% of the world's total GDP and is roughly equivalent to what the U.S. spends on the military in a year and a half. Imagine if we channeled the trillion dollars spent on warfare towards solving environmental and global problems. Look around and notice some of the issues and challenges we face. Diseases, poverty, malnutrition, starvation, and natural disasters. Some global issues, like overpopulation and climate change, are human-induced, while natural events cause others. However, through effective resource allocation, we can significantly reduce these issues and improve the quality of life for everyone. Governments are just one of many entities capable of addressing global problems. Some wealthy companies such as Amazon and Microsoft also have the financial means to support the necessary changes. Companies aside, the wealthiest 1% of people have a combined wealth of about $162 trillion. That's a whopping 45% of the world's total wealth owned by just 1% of the populace. On a global and personal level, it's crucial to take measures against potential threats before they happen. Instead of accumulating funds and spending extravagantly, we could advance space explorations and fill strategic gaps in our knowledge of the outer universe. Through dedicated research, we can eradicate global poverty and create vaccines to combat diseases. We can also use these resources to bolster our defenses against future disease outbreaks so we don't experience another pandemic like COVID-19. Additionally, we can invest resources to freeze the melting Arctic, thus reducing carbon dioxide emissions. This summary examines the existing and emerging global challenges and threats and explores how our vast funds can counter them. It'll be worth your time, so strap in and join us on this journey. Key Point 2 Eliminate Global Diseases there are many global problems to tackle, and diseases in developing countries are at the top of the list. The COVID-19 pandemic ravaged the world in 2020, affecting almost everyone and every sector of the global economy. Its recurring effects plunged the world into a full-scale financial and food crisis. Unfortunately, the world is no stranger to devastating diseases as it has suffered from other outbreaks, such as the Spanish flu, which killed about 50 to 100 million people in 1918. In 2018, malaria infected about 288 million people worldwide and killed roughly 405,000 children, predominantly from sub-Saharan Africa. And today, we still have yet to eliminate this disease. Moreover, tuberculosis alone kills around 2 million people yearly. The continued spread and casualties of these diseases, particularly in developing countries, are not due to a lack of knowledge of their existence and dangers, but to a lack of resources to eradicate them. How do we help doctors and other health workers eliminate these diseases? A major approach is investing resources into medicine and medical research. For example, Mark Zuckerberg and his wife launched a program to invest in medical research to fight diseases. They called it the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative, or CZI, and have donated billions. The end point of initiatives like these isn't that people will no longer get sick, as CZI will only reduce the spread and infection rate to a minimum. There have been many other initiatives to fight diseases, such as the Human Cell Atlas, aimed at mapping out all human cells in the body for research and medicinal purposes to advance life. A thriving economy begins with a sound and working health system. In addition to raising funds, we need to assemble expert teams of scientists, medical personnel, and researchers. These teams should be adequately incentivized to dedicate their time and expertise to uncover practical healthcare solutions. Furthermore, establishing relevant authorities responsible for resource allocation and waste prevention is essential. Since we're talking about channeling funds into the right things, the government can also impose or raise its tax on harmful substances, like tobacco, alcohol, and cigarettes. A massive tax on these products would raise the prices, drastically reducing the number of illnesses and deaths from them as people will consume them less. To cure disease globally, you need to address at least two other major issues, poverty and climate change. Rowan Hooper Key Point 3 Save Every Species of Life on Earth the world is full of various living organisms. There are about 5,416 identified species of living creatures on Earth, but it could only be a matter of time before a good chunk of them go extinct. This includes primates, the species most similar to humans. A 2017 study published in the Journal of Science Advances revealed that 39 species and subspecies of primates face extinction. Also, a quarter of all mammals, including 13% of birds, will likely go extinct if they're not protected soon. These threats come from human activities and the escalation of global warming. The Earth is not ours alone. By protecting other species from extinction, we are saving ourselves as well. In 2019, a study of insect diversity showed that more than 40% of insects face extinction. The excessive use of pest control on Chinese farms has wiped out many bees that pollinate flowers. Farmers now have to pollinate them artificially using pollen pots and paintbrushes. If such an insect collapse hit the rest of the world, we'd be the next ones to go extinct, along with the insects and animals. 
The world must identify the critical threats driving extinction factors and eliminate the hazards. One of the areas to focus on is the biosphere. It provides oxygen and supplies water worldwide from oceans, seas, and other water bodies. The biosphere also clears the air of emissions. Another key area to watch is the climate. The acronym HIPPO identifies all the critical problems responsible for climate change and global warming, which threaten some existences. It stands for habitat loss, invasion by non-native species, pollution, population increase or loss, and overhunting. The most threatening HIPPO element is habitat loss, which comes from activities like deforestation and farming, and displaces animals and insects from their natural homes. For example, the Amazon rainforest is one of the most significant forests in the world, and it influences climate through air and water circulation. Such ecosystems need to be protected. And in general, our forests need worldwide protection. We should allocate more land for conservation and promote biodiversity in smaller areas. Did you know, we'll spiral into a major food crisis if all insects disappear. Key point four. Find a new habitat for humanity. Elon Musk's SpaceX project envisions humanity as a multi-planet species, with Mars being the primary target for habitation. This planet offers valuable resources, such as methane for fuel and water in the form of ice, which we can convert for everyday use. The biological science of Mars is astonishing, and it seems like there was, or still is, life over there. Various research proves we could transform the planet into something habitable for humans. However, NASA has identified the SKGs, or strategic knowledge gaps, we need to figure out about Mars before considering settling there. These gaps represent what is stopping humans from relocating. Some of the SKGs include the weather dynamics and atmosphere of the planet, investigation about the existence of past and present life on the planet, the source and distribution of water, biohazard contamination risks from passing Martian materials to Earth and back, exposure risk to radiation, and adequate technology to sustain life. Having identified these knowledge gaps, NASA also prepared a list of gap-filling activities, or GFAs, to dig further into the identified gaps and provide solutions. But the bulk of that information isn't in the public domain yet. Some of the reasons it's necessary to get a new habitat for humanity are to protect the Earth's environment, reduce carbon emissions, and protect humans against any global catastrophe that threatens to wipe out the human race. We're talking about human extinction. An asteroid wiped out dinosaurs about 66 million years ago. A heavy volcanic eruption could damage humans similarly. Thus, there ought to be an alternate habitat in case of threats. Space exploration fuels scientific discoveries, technological advancement, and the potential for human expansion. How can we accelerate settlement on Mars? Naturally, it will take time, but the process will speed up if all the countries involved in space exploration create an alliance and combine their knowledge and resources. The biological science of Mars is fascinating. It's quite likely that there was life on the planet in the distant past, and there may even be microbial life there now. Rowan Hooper Did you know? Mars is red from the rusty iron in the ground. This is why it is often called the red planet. Key point five. Remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Sulfite dioxide spread across the atmosphere and worldwide after the 1883 explosion of Krakosha, a volcanic island in Indonesia. This event momentarily changed the look of the sky and diverted sunlight from the Earth. It was a good thing because while it lasted, sulfite dioxide in the atmosphere cooled the Earth and reduced global warming. Could we replicate that incident by adding a heap of sulfite to the sky? The idea is relatively inexpensive to execute, but it's filled with uncertainty. While we're sure it will cool the Earth as it did before, some parts of the globe could experience terrible climate change and other adverse effects. Reducing greenhouse gases is a practical way to eliminate carbon dioxide. This can be done by growing more trees in residential and non-residential areas, or by doing something more technological, like using special equipment to extract carbon from our atmosphere and bury it underground regularly. On a personal level, we can embrace green technology by planting a garden around our home and using renewable energy where possible. Substantial climate change requires bold actions and clear intentions from everyone. There are several other ways to reduce carbon emissions. For instance, the U.S. government launched a tax credit initiative in 2008 to facilitate and encourage carbon capture, popularly known as 45Q. The initiative pays $30 to $50 per ton of carbon dioxide that companies bury underground. Alternatively, we could establish a carbon tax, which charges companies every time they engage in activities that emit carbon dioxide. These fines, in the form of taxes, will help reduce emissions. It's not something novel. The tax type has existed in countries like Sweden and Norway since 1991. A verified carbon offset scheme could also work well. Manufacturers will be mandated to pay some amount based on how much carbon their company's activities emit, and these funds will be used to suck carbon out of the air. Something also needs to be done to the amount of carbon that goes into our soil and water bodies. Too much carbon can easily lead to acidification and cause harm to microbes and other life forms. Key point six. Declare a green revolution. Our agricultural system is a significant pollutant that threatens our environment. Don't believe it? 
let's take a look at the stats. Agriculture makes up 70% of land use in the UK, but the total GDP it generates is only 0.7%. While the sector generates such low GDP, it accounts for 11% of the country's carbon emissions. Cattle farming is one of history's original businesses. About 83% of the world's farmland is dedicated to cattle production, and about 60% of the world's greenhouse gas emissions come from cattle. Another disadvantage is that cattle are one of the biggest destroyers of our ecosystems. They trample plants, displace insects, and occupy fertile farmlands. Research shows that the world's population will increase by 30 to 50% in the next few decades. Food production will also rise to meet the demand of the increased population. As the population numbers rise, so would the demand for meat. As a result, cattle, one of the most consumed types of meat, would have to increase production even more if the public's appetite for meat increases. Therefore, creating a dependable food future is necessary to meet the growing population's demand without harming our ecosystem or causing emissions. Cattle are not the only animal of concern. Every year, we kill about 60 billion chickens, mostly raised under cruel conditions before consumption. Pigs and some other farm animals face the same fate, and the methods of killing them come with carbon dioxide emissions. Embracing plant-based meat will reduce greenhouse emissions and help preserve our planet. Apart from animal rearing and consumption, extensive agriculture also accounts for the emissions we create and the dangers posed on our planet. This results from too much tilling and fertilization, which affects the soil and its organisms. How can we tackle agricultural greenhouse emissions? Here are some steps we can take. Recycle waste food to feed insect larvae. Engage in insect farming as it produces fewer emissions, and the insects can serve as food for some animals. Produce alternate foods that give the same nutrients as meat. Modernize agricultural practices so that they are environmentally friendly. And encourage farmers to take part in agroecological training. Key point 7. Understanding the myths of the world. Project Trillion discourages wasteful spending, saves the planet, and improves lives. That is how to spend a trillion dollars. Now let's think big. What if we create a new life form? What if we develop automation models to make life easier? The invention of AI today is helping change lives in various fields. Some people fear it would threaten us, like the Skynet or Terminator in fiction, which projected that artificial intelligence robots would wipe out the human population on Earth. The sentiment is understandable, but let's look at the positives. An explosive in AI will create new jobs for people and make our social and economic lives easier, much like the Internet did. Some of the fields that will find AI applicable include medical diagnosis, technological advancements, education, learning and research, military and warfare, the primary goal of AI isn't to take over the world or our jobs, but to help advance lives beyond human capacity. Despite our groundbreaking achievements, science has yet to unfold many mysteries. AI can help because of its ability to be superhuman in many respects. The world is filled with enigmas, encompassing theories and propositions that elude our understanding. Take, for example, the origins of the world and our inexplicable galaxy. Who knows what truly happened? Another mystery lies in the expansion of the universe. Experts believe the universe expanded greatly and rapidly during its first few moments, an occurrence traceable to some big bang that happened. In science, this is known as the inflation theory. The scientific concept was developed in the 20th century to explain the puzzles in the universe. Yet, this theory and others fail to prove satisfactory answers. As previously mentioned, we've experienced significant progress in Mars exploration. Astronomers already found water, which paved the way for the theories of the potential existence of living things. However, we still don't know many things about the planet. But artificial intelligence and other technological advancements will aid in the exploration of space. For example, scientists are already using exploration rovers to navigate Mars and collect useful data for ages. The rovers are built with AI, enabling them to sense and safely pass rocks and other obstacles without getting stuck. Did you know? In the 1970s, NASA revealed that its spacesuit costs 15 to 20 million dollars. That's over $100 million when converted to today's pricing. Conclusion This exploration has focused on spending from the government's perspective and matters regarding global projects, priorities, and how health can address significant global challenges, making life better for everyone. But the government isn't the only one responsible for ensuring we achieve this. We also have many roles to play as individuals. For instance, the government can't force us to go vegan, no matter how much tax they put on meat and carbon emissions. We can, however, do it if we choose to. Project Trillion focuses on addressing the following issues. Poverty and malnutrition in underdeveloped countries. Diseases and infections, including the provision of resources and vaccines to combat them. Reduction of carbon and greenhouse emissions. Conservation of endangered animal and insect species. Exploration of alternative habitats for humans. Renewal and protection of ecosystems. Universal access to affordable education. You can decide, and influence the people around you, to conduct healthy environmental practices. From planting trees to proper animal rearing, food consumption, waste disposal, and healthy energy consumption. Try this. While you may not have billions to contribute to environmental causes, here are some things you can start doing today. Create awareness around you of the dangers of carbon emissions on the planet. 
Partake in the green revolution by planting a tree today to save the earth. Save any endangered animal or insect species around you. Encourage environmental protection and participate in voluntary ecological services. And transition to renewable energy if possible. If you're a farmer, practice environmentally friendly agriculture. Save as many trees and microbes as possible to reduce greenhouse emissions.